Hello and welcome back to Tainted Grail. This time we're going to be checking out the Conquest mode, which is a hardcore roguelite RPG experience. This video is kindly sponsored by the developers, and if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Personally, I feel like the Conquest mode is extremely fun, and the pure reason for that is that there is a multitude of different options for your character here and look at this we can actually we actually have character creation here as well which is really cool because i don't believe we have that in the campaign so we're just going to be choosing someone here and uh, let's have a look uh yes uh, dark hair we can uh, change our hairstyle our beard oh look at this i can have a beard yes i like this okay Ooh, nice very good and I'm going to call myself uh, Bear, Bear Tilt because, uh, of course, of course, I have to do that, right? Yes, I have to do that. All right, so one of the most standout features in the Conquest mode in comparison to the campaign at the moment in the early access development is that you can pick different runes. And, uh, well, you can see here that this, this class is currently coming soon, but this determines how you play which i think is really really cool so you have brawler guardian and berserker we've seen the brawler in action in the campaign videos that i've made recently and i did go over in the previous episode of conquest mode a number of the different runes as well and what they're able actually able to do so if you'd like to check that out there is a link in the description for that video and uh, i go over quite extensively a variety of different uh, different runes. So because Brawler is actually really fun, I actually like that a lot. I was thinking about selecting that, but I really wanted to try something a little bit different so I could showcase some uh, some alternate gameplay. So we're actually going to be playing as the Guardian. I personally feel like I'm not that good with the Guardian, so it might be kind of fun to challenge myself a little bit here. And I'm not saying that I'm a perfect player of this game by any means, but uh, yeah, I think it could be quite fun to try it out. All right, so... We can light a weird candle to boost this range. Uh, I think we're actually just going to carve our name in this, which basically makes it possible for us to teleport back here. And uh, if we get a, uh, a checkpoint in the wilderness here, then like for example, this one, what I can do is I can carve my name into this and then I can travel between the two milestones. And as you can see, every time you carve your name, you're going to be losing a little bit of HP. Now, I could also light a weird candle to boost this milestone's range, which I think I'm probably not going to do. Not for this one, at least. And I'm going to take a look at the map. And you can see here that there is actually another milestone just ahead of us here. So I'm actually going to go into this, this fight. And we're going to see what we can do against this guy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit more strategic with what I extend the range of, if you know what I mean. So I'm not just going to go randomly, uh, you know in uh, all directions and just waste my weird candle because let's face it weird candles they're, they're they're not that hard to come by but they are quite expensive i think so we probably want to be a bit careful of that anyway this guy is preparing for a special attack we know what this guy does he's infected and as soon as he dies or as soon as he, one turn elapses he's going to die he's going to kill himself or he's you know whatever is inside him is going to kill himself and then it's going to be all very very hard indeed anyway the guardian what it does every for every three charges consume draw one card and gain one energy pretty crazy right yeah if used on at least nine charges you gained one additional energy passive skill keep one card on your hand at the end of the turn so you can play very strategically with this rune we're going to use small strikes initially Uh, I was hoping that I'd be able to get there in time, but no such luck. I'm going to keep the stance card just in case. Yep, seems like I was able to get there because here's the thing. When you create a new character or when you die, because of course this is a roguelite mode, so you are expected to die at some points. But um, yeah, when you die, you gain a buff that you can take into the first battle of your journey. And uh, basically what that does is that gives you 75% increased damage and 75% damage reduction. But that does not stay forever. That's gone now. That was my first fight, and now I no longer have it. So we are going to have uh, some more some more difficulties here. Oh, hello there. Trivial. Okay, let's do this. I'm wondering who these guys are. I think these are abominations. Abominations have this very cool ability 
that basically allows you to play very strategically because you can pretty much just use defensive cards. Now, <laughs> I've gotten a little bit unlucky here because now I'm, I'm going to get attacked pretty heavily and I was actually hoping I would have more stance cards uh, to, to block damage, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm going to be taking a lot of damage here. I'm going to try and see if I can do a little bit of damage to this enemy. And then I'll just do small strikes, just randomly. There we go. Oh, that actually worked out quite nicely. Okay, so I don't really want to keep any of these cards, so I'm just going to skip. We're going to take a lot of damage here, unfortunately, as you can see. Uh, but thankfully now, because what, what they do, what these abominations do, is they attack everyone on the battlefield except themselves. But they do attack other abominations. So it's very, very useful. Um, maybe we can actually kill one of them. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, uh, what about small strikes? Okay, there we go. Whew. I was a bit worried about that for a second. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to block once again. Now, they said that this fight was trivial. No, no, no. It doesn't seem to be, at least not for me at the moment. And, uh, of course, I probably should have fought someone a little bit easier before actually dealing with this one. But it's okay, because we have achieved victory, and I've leveled up multiple times. And bear in mind that this, as I've said before, is a roguelite. So if I do end up dying, then it's not the biggest deal. So... We have leveled up. Let's pick a new card, shall we? Increases your damage by 10% until the end of combat. That is a zero cost card, which I very much appreciate. So I will be taking that. And a new passive skill. At the start of every turn, gain one guardian rune charge. That actually sounds very powerful. Block all enemy attacks in the first turn of every combat. That actually seems pretty good too. But it only works on the first turn. So I'm looking for much more throughput in these abilities. In other words, I really want to have longevity in these. So at the start of every turn, gain one Guardian Rune Charge. I guess I'm going to do that. Now we can pick another card because, of course, we do have uh, multiple level ups. Okay, Mark of Blood. Reduces enemy's armor by 60. Basically what that means is you can do 60% additional damage. If you reduce their armor from 0 to a negative 60, then you'll do 60% increased damage. So I actually think I'm going to be taking Mark of Blood because it is a zero cost stance card because anytime you play a stance card, you gain Guardian Charges, and that's what I'm trying for here. We're going to go for Rush as well. Sacrifice 5% maximum HP, gain plus one energy, and draw one card. That, I think, is pretty powerful in a uh, mm, kind of close run situation. On every 12th card played, draw two cards. Guardian Rune Charges carry over from fight to fight. That sounds really fun. For every stance card you play, gain five armor. Ooh, that actually is really good. Every stance card you play. We're going to be playing a lot of stance cards, so I'm going to take that. All right, so I only have one turn left of my weird candle. Basically, if, if I just stand here, my weird candle does not run out. But if I start moving, then it will start ticking down. That's what that means. So we're going to go. And I think I'm actually going to travel between weird stones, and we're going to go back over here. And this is... Back at the start, of course. This is back at the start. I'm actually very injured. So it would be nice if I could potentially speak to the merchant. Ah, yes. This building is just a ruin. I would like to speak to the merchant, though. Where is he? There he is. There he is. Okay, I was actually going the wrong way. Fantastic. Okay, who are you? It's not my farm old, is it? I'm from up north, the land of fog, but this mist, it was all wrong. Have you seen the others? They were right next to me. I, I don't know what happened. Okay, so you can either rest here. You can meditate and forget skills. So in other words, what you can do is you can uh, pay a little bit of money. I think it's 100 wealth. And you can forget skills. In other words, you can remove cards from your deck and make it a lot easier to draw the cards that you actually want. You can buy supplies, of course, and you can also sell supplies. He does have a sword here, which is not as good as what we're currently wearing. But he does have some good armor here for 75 gold. And the weird candles, as you can see, are 35 gold each. So probably not going to be doing anything there. What about... Uh, 75 wealth? Is it good? Is it... Uh, I think I might buy the... Do we have a travel map? Uh, yes, we do have a travel map. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I will buy another weird candle. And I will buy the rusted chainmail. 
And that will be it. And then I will rest. And I will get 50 HP from that. Now bear in mind that you can only rest once per run. So obviously you got to be uh, a bit careful of that. And as you can see, whenever you uh, put on some different armor or a different weapon, it changes your look, which is very cool. I like that. All right. So let's travel between the milestones again and we'll go back to the one that we were at. And now there are some hunting grounds here, but I'm not sure if I really want to go. Should I go in here and see what the, see what's up? The local hunters call this ancient skull the Stag Father and lay charms and offerings around it. The legends say that the Stag Father takes the dreamers away to join him on a great hunt. Okay, so I can either go on a hunt or sleep in the shrine. Don't know whether I really want to do that. Oh, go on a hunt. Oh, okay. So we're actually fighting something. I don't know what we're fighting. So this is probably going to end up in my demise. Ah, I see. Yes, this is actually kind of harsh. Uh... I'm dead, I think. I think I'm pretty much dead. I don't think I can really do anything about this. I could potentially do this, gain some armor. I could do this, gain a card. And yes, there we go. Gain some additional energy, gain some more armor. And that's pretty much all I can do. I could reduce their armor by some more, which would actually make sense on this guy. Now I do 150% increased damage to this one. And we're going to... Oh, I don't have enough damage. Oh, that was really bad. Okay, well, let's just see if I'm actually able to survive. I think I'm probably dead. I'm not. Just about. Just about. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, they, uh, well, because I used that ability, he's returned to full HP here, which is really, really bad. Okay, so let's use another stance card here. Let's draw our guardian card. I think I might be dead here, to be honest. I think I might be dead here. So, we'll see if I can maybe do something with this. Uh, why? Why did you do this to me, game? Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Kill him. Okay, good. Uh, I'm, I'm dead. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. There is nothing I can do about that whatsoever. I am super, super dead. Boom. Yeah. For most, death is final, a place from which they will never return. For some, it is a place of eternal torment from which they come back as monsters. You, on the other hand, find yourself in a desolate and peaceful land, lit only by the gold, gold, cold glow of stars way out in the sky. And so, as you can see, they give you a little bit of a tally about what you've done, and this basically gives you your best records as well, so you can kind of see if you've done a little bit better. So... We're going to try again. We're going to try again. And now here's the thing. When you die, of course, because this is a roguelite, dying is a part of the experience, you do get to pick a starting blessing. So you can start with 200 more gold, start with 20 additional max HP, or you can start with four more weird candles. Now, these blessings are somewhat randomized every single time, as far as I'm aware. And I think I might like to start with 200 more gold. Because what that will do is that will give me the opportunity to maybe buy some armor almost immediately, maybe buy some extra weird candles, maybe buy some healing potions, because let's face it, if I bought some healing potions there, I probably would have been in a, a pretty, pretty decent situation in comparison to what I actually ended up being. So I now have 300 gold, as you can see. So I can pretty much just go straight in to the merchant and I can buy supplies straight up. And I can buy this armor immediately, which is actually amazing for me to be able to do that. And as you can see, this uh, this sword is a little bit different now. Mm. Okay, well, uh, let's buy some of these. Let's buy some healing potions. I have 170. That should be absolutely fine. Okay, great. And we can also meditate and forget skills. And I think I'm actually going to do that. We're going to forget one of these attack cards, I think. Because as you can see, I have barely any stance cards. And I don't really want to stun things. So I'm actually... Yeah, I'm just going to get one, rid of one of these attack cards. Because I would much rather draw a stance card than draw an attack card. So hopefully that will work out for us. Now what I want to do is I want to put these healing potions... Ah, oh, they're already in my combat. Okay. They're already in my combat quick bar. So that's pretty nice. Let's put on my new armor as well. So... As you can see, we're much stronger than we were previously because we were able to gain 
a little bit of an advantage early on, which is very cool. So let's carve our name. Let's extend it because I'm actually going to go this way this time. And oh dear, no, let's not go that way. <laughs> let's not let's not go that way just yet because those guys are weak, quote unquote. Because hilariously enough, even though enemies might be trivial, the combination of enemies matters a great deal. So even if you think, oh, look at that, that seems pretty easy, you know, because you're fighting against an enemy that is potentially uh, weak by itself, but the combination of enemies makes a huge difference. I'm going to take some uh, pretty considerable damage from the abomination here. Oh, actually, I didn't take that much damage because of my uh, Soul Reborn uh, buff that we gain upon starting a new run. So I'm I'm pretty happy with this because I can just literally use one block and then we can just kill this. And then I uh, ah shouldn't have done that. Okay, well, that was a bit of a mistake on my part, but that's fine. That's fine because this abomination is not going to be able to do anything anymore and I can literally just finish it off. No problem at all. All right. Good, good. Very nice indeed. Not too bad for the first fight at least, and we have leveled up already. So, hmm, all cards currently, <laughs> this is really good in my opinion. If you have a huge amount of cards or, or you've just uh, drawn cards thanks to the Guardian Rune ability, and then you use this, you're gonna have every single card cost zero if you have one cost cards. So I'm gonna be taking Breath Control. Personally, I think that's really good. And let's have a look. At the start of every turn, gain one Guardian Rune Charge. When you draw extra cards, increase your base damage by 10%. Guardian Rune Charges carry over. Okay, stay prepared, in my opinion, is really good. All right, so we've got some wealth here as well. Who's that? That's a challenging fight. Okay, yeah, let's run away in the opposite direction. Thank you. And as you can no doubt tell, my weird candle has actually run out. But now I don't have to worry about that so much because I have extended the range with the milestone here. So I can pretty much just run around however I like until I come to the next milestone and then I can also use that. So for example, there you go. I have now increased the range of this again. So let's have a look. Okay, that's a bit too hard in my opinion for me at the moment. Uh, okay, one enemy. It's a weak enemy though. We might have some problems here, but I need to level up somehow. And you have to choose your battles wisely, because if you don't, you're going to get that same rat uh, rat encounter that we had, which really didn't help me that much. Okay. Grimoire of Reversal reverses the target's next hit, harms itself on healing, and heals the player for the amount of damage it would no normally inflict. That actually seems like a very, very good item. Oh, it seems like, wow, look at this. I've just gained a huge amount of really good items here. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Just going to be using a bunch of stance cards here because this guy's going to attack me twice, but I've already used two blocks, so I'm pretty happy with what we've done there. This guy's going to take me a little bit of time to kill, but I don't really mind that so much. As long as I can build up my guardian charges, I'm just going to get more and more and more powerful as the fight goes on, which is probably the case for most of the runes with the exception of the berserker i think because the berserker thrives on taking damage um so it's a bit of a high risk high reward sort of gameplay there so you do need to be a bit careful of it but i'm hopeful that i will be able to get uh, no i don't want to keep any of these cards I, actually i should have i should have kept one card actually because then i could have used breath control now and then it would have made much more sense wouldn't it yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. But you know what? I'm going to use Guardian. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to use Guardian now. Gain some more cards. And then I'm going to use Breath Control. And I still have two... Yeah, this is actually really good. Yeah, I still have two energy. So let's use... Let's use, let's use everything, right? I mean, why, why would we not? It makes sense. There we go. So now we're going to be doing a lot of damage. And this is exactly what I mean. You just have so much control over the fight. It really makes a huge difference. Okay, so this guy's actually going to be applying a debuff to me, but I'm not entirely sure what the debuff is. So I guess I will just, um, I will just have to deal with it. We're just going to attack him straight up here. I don't think we really need to defend. I could do the Guardian uh, rune again, but I'd rather wait with that. Ah, okay, so he's put limitation on me, which reduces my energy by one. That's actually kind of bad because now I can't use 
breath control. However, I can use my guardian rune to gain one energy and then I can use breath control once again, as you can see right there. So now we can do exactly what we intended to do, which is just attack and attack and attack. Now, the really, really cool thing, by the way, about this particular class is that I can use all these stance cards and then again, look at this. I can gain one energy if I want to and I can gain another card. So if I was actually able to get the killing blow in this round, which unfortunately I'm not able to, but if I was able to, then I would have been able to finish him off potentially from that, which is pretty cool. So let's do stand your ground and then I'm going to use the guardian rune to gain two more cards and two more energy as well. And then we're just going to attack him and we'll try to attack him even further here. He's trying to stack the limitation buff by the looks of things, which I don't think is a particularly smart thing for him to do, but, well, who am I to say? Maybe that's what he wants to do with his life. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's... Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough damage cards, so I will have to wait. Ah, yes. Your deck has been infected with obsolete cards. Is it just me that thinks this art is really creepy? Ah, yes, well, there you go. Done. 450 experience. I would have expected a lot more from that, but it is just a weak enemy. It's just the fact that my character's pretty low level right now and doesn't have a huge amount of, uh, well, anything really to, to do damage at the moment. Okay, so draw. This is great. This is a really fantastic card, in my opinion. It basically allows you to draw a card, and if you've used breath control beforehand, you will be able to draw a card for free, which is great. So we'll do that. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look. Who's that? That's a weak uh, with a bunch of other enemies. Mm, no abominations in there as far as I can tell. I could try and sneak by, but uh, that has proven to be not exactly doable. There's a lot of... Okay, we could probably go over here. We could probably fight this. I think this is probably going to be my best shot at achieving some kind of victory here, but it's going to be difficult in my opinion. Alright, uh, uh, no, no, it's actually not that bad, but the deer is going to be kind of hard because it attacks multiple times and usually anything that attacks multiple times is going to be kind of hard for the guardian because it's unable to block all of the attacks that are coming in. So I c what I could do is I could use my guardian rune right now, gain, yes, there we go, gain an additional block, which is what I wanted, and then we'll do, we'll just do some small strikes. And then we'll just keep a card, I guess, because breath control is a thing. And if I can keep a card that I can then turn to zero cost, that's going to be very, very important. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. This is fantastic. This is basically the perfect, perfect combination here. So I can use breath control straight away and then I can use draw a card. But I don't want to use that just yet because as you can see, oh, actually, never mind. I was going to say, what you can do is you can chain. Because this card has the ability chain, you can use more stance cards. Because as you can see, multiply card effect by number of cards of the same type played in this round. In other words, if I had a number of blocks, then I'd be able to use those blocks. And then I could increase the chain effect by a pretty significant amount. So what I could actually do is I'm going to use Guardian here. Uh... I was hoping for something a bit better than that, actually. I was hoping for block, but oh well. Never mind. Okay, yeah, so we have another block here, but that's really not going to help us now because we've just used the draw card thing. So I guess I will just block a little bit, and then we'll just attack as much as we possibly can. I don't really want to kill the deer. I'd like to kill this guy as fast as possible. <sighs> oh well, never mind. Okay, I'm going to keep this card because we've... Uh, may have need of stun. We might need a stun sometime. Alright. Wow, the deer does so much... What? The deer does so much damage. Okay, well, I guess what we can do now is just stand our ground. Stand our ground. We're going to use Guardian. We'll gain two additional energy for that. And we could... Ten technically, we could stun the deer, but I don't really want to do that. I'd like to focus on killing the main human enemy and I'm going to keep the shield bash once again because you never know there might be a reason to keep it it just in case the deer does massive damage or something like for example now might be an idea but I have breath control back which is fantastic so I think what I'm going to do is I'll use this you stand your ground as you can see it's chain plus two right now let's use that and then we can use our 
guardian ability. Gain another, gain another card. Mm, we can either use it to attack or stun. I could actually stun. I think stunning is probably going to be the thing I'll do. Because then we reduce more damage than we would otherwise take. And let's try and take this guy out if we can. Technically, I could use some abilities here. I mean, I could use some items. But I think I'm pretty, pretty happy to not do that. Just in case. I'd like to keep some items for a really, really hard fight. If at all possible. Alright. So, we're, we've pretty much killed the human now. So, I'm going to use breath control once again. I'm going to be able to block basically every single attack in this round. So, really don't have to worry about it. There you go. Done. And now we can just focus on the deer. And this is going to be much, much easier because I will hopefully be able to gain a number of blocking cards. And yeah, as you can see right here, I can just literally block every single thing. And you can see in the top left, we're gaining a massive amount of rune charges as well by doing this. And he's not going to be able to do anything to us. Not at all. It won't be able to do any damage whatsoever. And I'm still at a decent HP level. Yeah, now he's starting to get a bit more serious, you see. Now he's starting to get serious. So I'm actually going to use my Guardian ability here. And I was hoping for Breath Control, but unfortunately I'm not getting it. So I will just have to draw another card. There we go. We gained Breath Control. Now this is exactly what I'm talking about with the Guardian. The Guardian is such a crazy cool class that I initially thought was one of the weakest. But in my opinion, I think it's actually one of the strongest. It, it You know, my opinion changed pretty quickly when I, you know, realized the... Uh, the uh, extent to how powerful it can actually get, especially if you pick the right cards. And these are the right cards, as you can no doubt tell. Very, very powerful indeed. So basically, what I can do now is literally just attack with reckless abandon. And I don't even need to worry. Look at this. It's just crazy. I, I don't even... Look at this. It, it's, cra it's crazy. Look at that. I'm done. And I could still continue attacking. I could do even more damage again and again and again because they're all zero cost cards. And I still had, uh, I think, like four energy or something, which is pretty crazy. Okay, Erratic Seamstress. Hello there. The first thing you notice is a long veil made of rags, leaves, and pieces of fur held together with a snow white thread. Only when she stops and raises her eyes at you, a chilling truth is revealed. The weirdness changed the tips of her fingers into long, sharp needles. Anything in you needs sewing? I can take care of garments, body, or soul. They're all the same anyway. Okay, so we can ask her to sew our body. In other words, we'll get 10 HP. Guess we'll do that. The pain is brief and not as bad as you imagined. The body under the stitches heals before your eyes. It seems in the weirdness, her talent for sewing made her able to join more than just pieces of cloth. And we're going to ask her to come with us to our village. Ah, I have, this, I have this commission to finish first, she says. You stand and watch as she finishes, finishes the long veil. The last part is a fur of a feral cat, still dripping with blood. The seamstress folds the veil into a neat square and places it on the rock. Here, I think she'll like it. She shudders. I really hope she does. Now, let's go and see this village of yours. Okay, well, there you go. And that's exactly what I mean about the roguelite aspect of the game or uh, shall we say of this mode because you're able to run around the environment and, and the map is actually pretty large don't know whether you can see that because obviously we have the fog of war but it's pretty large and you can find a number of NPCs that you can then get to join your village and it's, very, it's persistent in that way there are many grisly tales about candle makers who secretly make their candles out of people they were supposed to protect Inside, the candle maker leans heavily on his cast iron mold, barely managing to stay awake. So fast. They burn out so fast. Perhaps if I... No, I may need both later. It takes a while for him to notice you. The candles aren't out, are they? You're not one of the weird spawns. Doesn't matter. I can't sell you any. I barely make enough to keep myself alive. Ask him to join you in your village. It doesn't take much to convince him. Lead the way. I could use a place where I won't need all of my produce myself and where ingredients are easier to obtain. His last words almost make you regret your decision. <laughs> all right, so there you go. We now have another person at our village. And uh, speaking of that, we should probably go back and actually see what they provide us because I have uh, not really had the opportunity to 
speak to these guys before. Okay, so there you go. We have the seamstress and the candle maker. Let's have a look at the candle maker first, and we'll see. Ah, good to see you. There's one more thing I forgot to tell you. This place here is where I fill the molds. You're welcome to come in at any time, but there... The candle maker points to a greasy thick curtain leading deeper into the house. That's where the secret part of the process takes place. Do not go there, understood? Never, under any circumstances. All right, so as you can see, we need 1,000 weird stones to set up his shop. Unfortunately, I have zero. I'm not entirely sure how to get weird stones right now, but of course, there's a lot of gameplay here. There's a lot of gameplay. She looks at the growing village with a critical eye. You did a good job gathering all these pieces together, but we need to do more before they turn into a real village. We need to join them, but I'm yet to come up with the right thread. All right, so you can see here that we also need weird stones to be able to um, activate her abilities as well. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I again, I still don't know how to get weird stones, but hopefully I will be able to do that in upcoming episodes. Stay tuned. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.